Hey y'all, welcome to day number 19 of the AI Agent Challenge. My name is Dylan. I help entrepreneurs win the game of business by upgrading their systems with AI agents and automated workflows. Today, it's an automation that was inspired by Alex Shimozzi. He said something a while back when I was consuming his content about what he does every single day is he logs into all of his bank accounts and he takes a beat of exactly how much money has gone in and has gone out of his bank account because what you measure is what you manage. So instead of having to go through the entire process of like logging into the bank accounts and going to a spreadsheet and calculating it all and just seeing what's going on, I decided to make a really useful automation for myself and something that most business owners I think would find to be super useful. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna use make.com to be able to analyze the monthly cash flow across multiple bank accounts to be able to deliver you a daily report on your cash flow for the month up to the date. So if that sounds interesting, let's get into it, shall we? So we're here with make.com and the AI agent challenge. We're gonna start off by creating a new scenario here and we're gonna call it day number 19. All right, day 19. And we'll say this monthly cash flow reporter. All right. And we're gonna first start off here by going into Google Sheets. I went ahead and just inside of my folder in Google Sheets here, the Google Drive, I went and created a just an empty spreadsheet called Cashflow Reporter. So we're going to be logging into that right now. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to be searching for rows. So we go here, type in search rows, go here, log in, and we're going to look for the spreadsheet. So I'm going to type in cash flow report. All right, there we go. And we're going to log into this one, sheet one, right here. And right now, we don't have anything in here. So what we're going to be doing is I'm going to show you a really useful tool that I found uh, a little while ago, and it uses the API of Plaid. If you don't know what Plaid is, it's a way that is developer-friendly or automation-friendly that allows you to plug into really any bank account, any financial reporting services really easily. And someone built upon this API that made a Google Sheets integration that we can utilize. And the way that we do that is if we go over here, and we go into here, we can go into extensions. The way that we get the extensions, we go into add-ons, get add-ons, just like this, and we type in money logs. So money logs is right here, and I already have this installed. So you just click install to get it. Now, I believe it's like, Maybe like five, ten bucks or something like that a month to be able to have access to uh, multiple bank accounts. So once you have that installed, you can go here and you can launch this extension called Money Logs. And you can see this right over here. All right, so once this loads up right here, we can log in or sign up. And so I'm going to log in right here with my account, just like this. And you can see here that I went ahead and I've signed into one of my bank account systems with Chase. And if I open this up, here's one account that I have logged in. So if I go, okay, cool, this is the one I want to use. I go to the right here. And what this is going to be doing is going to be plugging into the Plaid API to be able to access those bank accounts to be able to pull the transaction records. And now there's a lot of things that we can pull from this. We can pull expenses and incomes, income, and just all these pieces. So we'll do expenses and income. So what we want to do is we want to look what's going in the bank account and what's coming out of the bank account. And for this, I think we're just going to do a couple of days. So this normally goes back, you see, about a month. But we're just going to go right now, and we're just going to go up to the 5th of June. So this was like the last three days. And you can see all the different columns that we want to populate. So if we want to add additional columns, here's all the different bank account columns that we can pull in. Account, name, merchant, transactions, and all this stuff, subcategories. There's a lot of information that we can pull from. But if we only want the cash flow, we probably just need the date, the name, and the amount. That's probably all we need, those three functions right now. So we can add those columns, and then we're going to populate it into these into this sheet right here, just like this, and we can hit Create Sync. All right. So now this is going to be syncing the transactions going in and out of the bank account for the last three days. But you can do it for the entire month, you can do it for the entire year, or whatever works for you. And so we can see here, here's the last three days of what's been going on in this bank account. So now that we have this information coming into the system, we can go over to make 
And this is where we're going to search for rows. And I'm going to show you what this would look like for multiple bank accounts and for the entire month, just so you can get an idea of it. And you can do this on your own. So if we go inside of here, we're going to open this up. Go inside the system here. And this is where we want to add some filters. And the filters, we want to filter for dates. Because what we're going to look to do is we want to grab, we want to grab from the first of the month up to right now and just for this month. And the way we're going to be doing that is we're going to be using a couple of different variables inside of here. And so we're going to go to equals to, two, and we're going to go down to the filters. And there's a lot of different filters we can use, but we're going to look for the date filter. And we can see this daytime operator. And so we can say later than or equal to. And the first filter we're going to be using here in terms of operations is we're going to be putting in some variables here. So we're going to put in set date. And you can see we can put in the now function inside of the, the column here. And we can put, well, what date do we want to start? And this accepts any parameters between 1 to 31 because there's 31 days in a month. And so what's the date you want to have set? Right? And so we can say set date inside of here, and we can put whatever we want to have for the side. So let's just put this in here, set date. And we're going to want to use the now function because we want to use any time happening from now and from the first, right? So we're going to say between now and the first, right? This is the first filter. And we're going to add in the next filter that we're looking for. And we're going to set the another date. And we're going to go into this and we're going to do this again, similar, but we're going to grab not only the set date function, just like we had over here. I'm just, I'll just grab this whole thing across here like that. And we can say not only that, but we're also going to want to add in months. Now there is a set months function here. If you look at this and you can see if we go to set months, just like that, This is going to be like, how many months do we want to grab? And so we're going to nest this inside of here. And we're going to say, I want to grab the range, right, between the first of this month, right? So it's going to say, so right now it's June. So grab the first of June. And then I want you to only grab one month, basically the first of the month to here. And so you can see that this is going to be the range of grabbing a month. So if we hit OK, just like this. Now that we have this bundle coming across here, just like this. What we're going to want to do is we're going to want to be able to aggregate the numbers and we're going to total them up so that we can get a total cash flow of what's going on. The way we're going to do that is we're going to be using another mo another module here called numeric aggregator. So it's going to be aggregating the numbers. There's text aggregators that will aggregate text. This is going to aggregate the numbers. And so we're going to go inside of here and we're going to say search these rows that we just selected and we're going to want to sum those up. And the way that we're going to be doing that is we're going to be going into the amount column, which is going to be column C, just like that. There we go. Hit save anyways. And now we're going to hit run on this. Okay, what do we got going on here? Why is this not working? Oh, I see what we did here. Sorry, it's not, <laughs> it's not set months here, it's add months. Okay, I used the wrong function. That's why this is not working. All right, let's try this again. I'm going to go to the functions. We're going to type in add months, just like that. We're going to populate that in. There we go. There we go. So this is what we need to do. If we look at this, it says return at new dates, resulting in adding a given number of months to the date. Right? And it says you can, you can enter in a negative number. So you can see over here, you can go forward two months. You can go back two months. Right. And so what we're going to be looking for is just this month. And so we can see we're going to set the date and we're going to go from now to the first. And we're only going to be grabbing this one month. We're going to click OK, just like that. Now I hit save. Save anyways. And we're going to hit run. And so we can see here now we're starting to get the bundles. Perfect. And now if we look at this, we can see that this is 33. And if we look at this right here, and we look at the amount here, if we were to equal this and then sum this up, we can tell it's 33. So we saw we got the right number. So you could do this for the entire month. Again, if you just, all you need to do is go inside of here. And when you go to hit sync, you just need to run it for the entire of the month, right? I didn't, I didn't run it for the month just for, you know, 
privacy sakes <laughs> and just so that you can see how this works and functions, right? And so now what we're doing is we're aggregating the entire bank account for the entire month. If you go in here, you could then pick the entire month by going inside of here and going and picking the entire date. So you can go back as far as you like to grab as much data as you want. So if we had this just like this, we could do this exact same process again. We would just create another column here. Let's just call this, call this bank account one. And if we were to hit another sheet and we're say bank account two, rename, call this bank account two. And we would do this exact same process again that we did with the monies, but I'm just for simplicity's sake, I'm just gonna copy this data just like that. And then we can go over here and we can paste this right in here just like that. So technically we have two bank accounts going on for the entirety of the month. So if you have multiple bank accounts, you can aggregate what's money's coming in and what money's going out for the entirety of the month. Okay, so now that we duplicated the bank accounts, there's bank account one, bank account two, just like this. And let's just say we want to change this amount in here to 5,000, just like that, just to make them look a little different. We're going to hit save like that, and then we're going to duplicate this again. The way that we're going to be doing this is I'm going to show you this process just one more time. We're going to go into Google Sheets, go here, select this. We're going to search for rows, search rows, log in, type in cash flow reporter, just like that. Sheet name, we're gonna choose bank account two this time instead of bank account one. And then we're gonna go into the filters and we're gonna do the same filter process. We're gonna filter by date. And then we're gonna be putting in over here, we're gonna set that date. So we're gonna do day set, just like that. And we're gonna do the now variable. So we're gonna say, here we go. And we're going to change this equal this equals to, and we're going to look for later than or equal to. So later than or equal to today to the first. And so we're going to go in here and we're going to go look for the date operator. So we see later than or equal to. So we're going to pick that. And we're going to say and. So we're looking for anything that is from now to the first. And we're going to have the date. And we're going to do another date operator here. And we're going to say earlier than or equal to just like that. And we're going to take this exact same type of function. I'm just going to copy this over again. Hit enter. And we're going to choose the add months function. Just like that. And then we're going to add just this month, month, this one month. So anything from this month, from now to the beginning of the month for this month only. I'm going to click OK, just like that. And we're going to set up another t numeric aggregator. And we're going to ask to sum it. And we're going to sum the amount. All right. And this little alert just says that the aggregator shouldn't be the end of the function. So now we're aggregating bank account one's cash flow for the month and bank account two's cash flow for the month. And we're going to now stack these together. And we're going to be doing this by setting a multiple variable. So I go to set multiple variables, just like that. Add variables, and we'll say total amount. And then we're going to choose results one. And then the plus symbol. We're going to do that by grabbing the uh, plus function inside of here. Here's the plus function. And then we're going to want to close it out. Save, open that back up. And we want the second bank account right here just like that. So, so now we can see we've got both of these bank accounts coming in. And if we run this, we're gonna hit save here. It's gonna be running through both bank accounts. And then we're gonna have the total amount for the month here. As you can see, it has all this in, ter in terms of total amounts. We could shorten that up if we wanted to, but just for demo sake, so you could see here. So now we're aggregating both bank accounts and we're grabbing the cash flow, both transactions coming in and going out for the entirety of the month across multiple bank accounts. Now what we can do is we can send ourselves a notification. Now if we wanted to, uh, let's just say we want to do a router and we want to do both a text notification and an email notification. So I go here, 
I use the uh, Twilio module if I want to do this and say create a message. Phone number. I will put two and we're going to put in the phone number just like this. And then inside of here, we can put create a body. Hi, body. Go, hi, Mr. Owner. Your cash flow for the month is, and then we just go ahead and populate this amount just like that. Hit OK. And if we also want to send a message, you know, you can send it to your CPA or whoever keeps your books. You can do this and say send message, send message, go in here and we can say email to myself. Right here it says your daily cash flow report is here. Plain text. Hi, Mr. Owner. Your cash flow for the month is, and then we just populate the total amount, just like that. Now what we could do here is we can have this be basically running every single day. So when we want to, like at 7 a.m. or whatever, if we said set this up for every day at, let's just say you get up at 6 a.m., just like that. So now if we ran this, we could tell it's going to aggregate the bank accounts, grab that together, and then send us both a text message and an email notification. And if we go to my email, we'll see the report coming in right now. So we're going to log into the email. Don't you walk in. Let's go here. Here's daily cash flow, and this is the total amount. All right. So that is how you build a super simple automation to be able to generate what is your total cash flow across multiple bank accounts and to the day exactly how much money you've had coming in and going out for the month. Hopefully you found this useful and insightful. And if you did, feel free to give this a comment, a like, and even a subscribe. And I hope you enjoy yourself. Take care. Have a blessed and beautiful day, everybody. Much love, and I'll see you on the other side. Bye now.